Hi, my name is Sean Walker. I'm a Principal Product Success Architect here at ServiceNow and part of the Ranger team. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the Success Portal, uh, but more specifically, success goals and activities. This video is part one of a five-part video series on the Success Portal, so be sure to watch the other videos and see how all the components of the Success Portal work together to help you mature your SAM program. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking again about the success portal, the success goals and success activities, and then I'm going to jump into an instance and give you an overview of how to create a success goal. The success portal in Software Asset Workspace allows the asset managers to track the progress of their SAM application. So it helps you track the progress of your applications through using success goals. And you can also track the progress of those success goals as you progress through them. On the success portal, you can also perform a health check on your software configurations. And we'll talk more in detail about that in the health check video. You can also keep up to date, um, keep your software up to date using value builder tasks. And we're going to have another video on value builder tasks specifically as well. And then you can also mature your SAM program uh, with the predefined maturity items. So it really helps you go through seeing how you progressed in maturing your SAM program within your organization. And again, we're going to talk about that in another video. So what are success goals? So success goals define the, an objective for a SAM team to achieve in order to mature their SAM program. Each goal can be associated with very specific activities. Uh, and those activities can be assigned to specific users to complete. And they don't actually have to all be within the SAM practice. Um, goals can also be associated with value builder tasks and SAM maturity items. So again, your success goals should be um, goals that your SAM team has that either align to your organization's business objectives or help mature the SAM program. So when creating your success goals that have a financial impact on the organization, you want to be sure to be able to track the potential savings um, that can be achieved by completing this goal. When completing the goal, you want to make sure you enter your actual savings and the actual starts and end dates. Um, projected and actual savings are reflected not only on the success portal, but the, the values do roll up to the asset executive dashboard. So now I'm going to jump into an instance and walk you through setting up success goals and activities. Okay, so now I've logged into a Washington instance of ServiceNow with Software Asset Management installed, and I've navigated to the Software Asset Workspace. So today I'm going to show you the Success Portal. So the Success Portal is available right here. Through, through it has its own separate dashboard, and it has several different tabs. Um, if you want, the first time you're coming in, you can actually take a tour of the Success Portal to learn more about it. I'm not going to do that in today's video. I'm just going to show you some of the things that are available on the overview page. So again, there's the SAM maturity, which we're going to talk about in a later video. So I'm going to go in deeper into this one later. Um, you can also see, you know, your completed success goals, um, your total savings to date. Uh, you can also see categories for your projected savings. So if you remember from the presentation, it's really important that you put in uh, projected and actual savings because some of these values are going to roll up to that asset executive dashboard. Uh, and this, now it's currently grouped by categories. And we're going to go through that when we set up the success goal. But you can see all the different categories you can have for your specific goals. And then you can also see the goals in the different states that those goals are in. Um, in the Washington release, they've added health check in value builder data. So you can see that, you know, the health check only has a score of 33.87%. And if this instance, they've completed uh, eight value builder tasks. 
If you keep going down, you can see all of the different goals that are in the system um, that are currently uh, either in progress or new, et cetera, um, that can be worked on. So if I'm, a, say, a SAM analyst or something and I want to see some goals, I can come in down and see the goals here um, and start working on them and updating those goals. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take you through creating a success goal. So right up here at the top, you've got the create success goal. And what we're going to want to create a goal for today is this is a, we're going to pretend, I should say, that this is a brand new instance of ServiceNow. And one of the main things we want to do is get visibility into our end user compute environment. So we want to be able to see all the laptops, desktops that are out there and have that information imported into ServiceNow. So we're going to give this goal a title and we're just going to call it visibility um, into EUC devices. Um, and then we have the ability to uh, add it to a specific category. So if you remember on the dashboard, um, it had the different categories to group it by. So visibility into the end user compute devices really doesn't fit into any of these categories. Um, and we might be trying to get and realize some value uh, from other ta uh, activities in the, in the future, right? That we might be trying to get visibility into some of our assets. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually just gonna go back um, and not create that goal, but I'm actually going to come down into the license operations and I need to create a new category for myself to use. So if I scroll all the way down here, um, I can see here, you know, software maturity, success goals, success goal activities, and here's success category. So this is where you add a new success category. So these are all those different categories. You know, some of them aren't, um, software asset categories you want to be careful because if you do have hardware asset management installed as well your goals um, can align with either hardware or your categories can align with either hardware asset management or software asset management so i'm going to create a new category here um, and we're going to call this inventory visibility I can spell. And then we're going to say this is a software asset category and we're going to save this. So now I have a new category called inventory visibility. I guess inventory improvement could have aligned, but eh, not really because we don't have any end user compute devices in our environment right now. Brand new environment. So again, I'm going to go back to my uh, success portal and I'm going to go ahead and create that goal now. So visibility into uh, EUC, I'll say assets this time, in the category, and now we should have inventory visibility. So now when it's grouped on the dashboard, it's going to be in this inventory visibility category. Um, and then there's no vendor for this particular one. Is there a goal type? We have either savings or count. So I guess this is more of accounts, right? Not really getting any savings, direct savings from this. Um, and then we want to put a description in here. So we want to gain visibility into all EUC assets within our environment. Okay. Um, and then, so now we have the ability to assign this to a specific group. Um, you can see by default, I am the owner, so I could give this to somebody else to manage. I could put it to a different group to manage. Um, we have the ability to put the projected start date. So I think we're going to start working on this, let's say June, oops, June 1st. And we think it's going to take us eh, maybe a month to kind of get done. So maybe we'll get that done by July 1st. That's a pretty ambitious goal, but we'll try it anyway. Um, and then are we going to get any count on this? Well, we think we have, you know, 50,000 assets. So let's see, we should be able to get 50,000 projected count. And then we can go through and update our actual count at the end. And then there's no achievement description since we haven't really done any yet. So now I'm going to hit save. 
And now I've created a success goal. So there's my goal, visibility into the assets. Now, what are some of the activities that I need to do to be able to, um, to be able to achieve this? So we're going to have, we have SCCM in our environment and we have Jamf in our environment. So we're going to have to create some new activities. Um, we have Windows devices and Apple's devices. So we're going to say this is visibility into uh, Windows assets. Uh, and we're going to mark this, put this down as a description. Visibility, yeah, by importing SCCM data. And we can assign this again to someone else. So we can take our assign to, so maybe we want to assign it to a group. Um, and let's see if we have uh, an SCCM group and we do. So we're going to assign this to the SCCM group. So you can see this isn't actually part of, um, part of the SAM team. It's a separate group that's going to need be needed to help get that integration um, into SCCM together. So, we're going to go ahead and hit save on this. And now we have a new activity um, for this particular goal. Oops. Um, so what we can see here now is if we, let's refresh this and we should be able to see uh, our new goal. And visibility into end user computes. And here's the different tasks. We're just going to open this up. Um, and get to my goal this way. Another way I can get to my goal would be, again, through that uh, license operations view, and I can actually work on it through that license operations view, but I'm just going to open the goal up through here. And I'm going to actually create a, another activity because we also have Apple devices in our environment. So we need to make sure we have visibility into that. So this is visibility into Apple assets um, in the description by importing jamf data and again since this is let's see if there's any kind of group to assign this to because this really isn't an asset management task and we'll see oh look there's a jamf support group so we're going to assign it to the jamf support group as well and we're going to save this and now if we come back to our goal, we can see here we have these two, two goals. And as we go through and work on these, um, they will become, um, you know, you'll go from an open state. You can actually also track activities, right? So I can enter my work notes just like I would on a case or something like that or an incident. And you can kind of track all of your different activities. Um, or all the different tasks that you're doing on this. So it will all be contained within here so people know you're actually working on it. Um, now, I'm not going to update this specific goal at the moment because I want to use these a little bit later and show you how to link these to um, other activities and, uh, sorry, maturity items, etc. So I'm just going to leave that blank. I'm just going to go back into my goals and I'm just going to show you how to progress a goal through the states just to show you what happens. Um, so we can go into, let's go into this Adobe. Let's try, actually, you know what? Let's try and pick on with only one. Um, these are all very complicated goals. So they're consumption rules. There we go. So we'll, we'll go ahead and do this one. So there's a consumption rule um, activity for this particular goal. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and put completed uh, consumption rule and tested it. So I'm just going to say, okay, this activity is done. So now I'm going to actually close, complete this. Now, again, if you'll notice, you can also close incomplete or close skip an activity if it turns out to not be something that's needed to be done. You should probably put it in a work in progress if it's something that takes a long time. Well, we're going to close, complete this, and save this. And now if I take a look at my goal, um, I basically can see that it's ready to be completed, right? Because my tasks associated with the goal is close, complete. 
So this goal is ready. It's in a state of pending review, right? So all the activities are completed. So now the SAM manager or the owner in this case should be reviewing this goal to make sure that it was actually done to make sure that you have things like your, your actual start dates, right? So uh, we're just going to copy the projected over and say we actually did exactly what we said we were going to do, just so I can put some dates in here. So we actually putting in our projected start date, our projected end date actuals, right? Let's just update this to, uh, let's go, uh, so it was 20,000, let's update it to 100,000 was the actual, and let's complete this goal. And so now this goal has been completed and reviewed by, by Casey here, and Casey completed that goal. If I come back and just let me refresh my my portal again, I should see I didn't really track my um, my, my projected savings, but um, we should be able to see actual here, our actual savings. Remember, they were 1.13. Now it's gone up to 1.23 million. So we can actually see the savings. There's that consumption rules for WinZip. Um, that actually were some of those particular savings were coming from. So that is um, success goals and activities. So you can create as many goals as you want, as many activities as you want, as long as you're, you're making sure you're trying to use this to align with maturing your SAM program or making sure your goals align with those business objectives that you're really trying to achieve. So today we talked about the success portal and more specifically about success goals and activities. And then we went through a demonstration of how to create a success goal and specific success activities for that goal. Uh, we also made sure we talked about those projected and actual savings and how they roll up into the dashboard. So um, for more information on success portal, you can go to the ServiceNow product documentation website and here's some really good links for you. So you get success portal view, create success goals for software asset management and create software success activities for software asset management. So be sure to stay tuned for the next part of our video series. Again, this was part one of five. So stay tuned for more videos about the success portal. Thanks for your time.